If you're new to data validation, keep watching. If you're experienced and you think you know what I'm about to do, I'm guessing you probably don't. So keep watching. All I want to do, I've got Power BI, I want to search for maybe a drop down. Here we go. I want to do maybe Power Automate was three hours. And if I search for another one, Power Apps, okay, that was five hours. How have I built this drop down? Okay, there's a few ways of doing this, but there's a safer way that I'm now using. Okay, there's a few glitches with certain ways of doing things. So I'm going to show you the main technique I would use, which is create a table on another sheet, but don't stop there, okay? Because there's some bugs, which I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna show you my solution. So here's my table, okay? I've just put in my list of things. These are the services that Access Analytic offer, okay? Um, and maybe I've got spaces, maybe I haven't, but what you could do is then go to any sheet. I'll just do it on the same sheet to keep it easy, but you go to any sheet and you go uh, under data, you go to data validation and then list. Now, if you're on the same sheet as this table, you can sort of highlight it. But if you're on a different sheet, you can't. And normally you're on a different sheet. So you could type things in and put commas between them. That's absolutely awful for a long list. So don't do that. And like I said, you can't refer to this. So what can you do? Well, the old technique, still one I use today really sometimes, but I'm moving away from it, is to highlight the table range and go here and call it something like DD services. Okay, and then on any sheet, you can go to data validation and click list. And if you can remember what you called it, great. If you can't, press F3 and click on DD list, DD services, and click OK, and you've now got a nice drop down. Great. Okay, and let me just make sure I mark that so I know exactly what I'm doing. The cells there. But there's an issue. Okay, there's an issue with this. Number one, because I've got blanks, you can type absolutely any old nonsense in. Awful. Okay, it shouldn't allow that, it should stop me. If I didn't have any blanks, you know, if I just got rid of all the blanks, then when I try and type in some nonsense, it won't let me. But are you 100% sure you'll always remember that there's not blanks or somebody else won't come in and add another row and then delete something and change their mind? So it's not super safe. And the sort of workaround, which isn't lovely, is again, under data, under data validation, is untick ignore blank and you click OK. All right. And then when somebody tries to do it, even though there's a blank, it won't let you. But the downside of this with ignore blanks and things is it can sometimes just put up a little warning icon, which is a bit ugly. Mm. Okay, not great. And you've got to remember that, tick that, untick that box and things. There's also another issue with this approach. And that is if I just happen to be working on a totally different sheet, I think, oh, I'll copy that sheet either using drag or, you know, what click copy. Great, I've copied a sheet, no issues. Copy it one more time. The name DD, what, what does it mean? And I say, oh, I don't know, click no. And then it goes into this box. What do you, and you go cancel. And then you try and close this box and you go cancel and you get yourself in a horrible pickle. And you go, I don't know, yes. And you're not really sure what you've said yes to because what's really happening, there, there's a bug. If you name an entire column in a table, okay, so under formulas, under name manager, I've now got these duplicate names at a sheet level. It just makes can make spreadsheets really messy, especially if you've got a few drop downs or you've named a few columns. So I'm not a big fan of that. Okay. And my fix used to be, okay, this used to be my fix, which is ridiculous, but this is what works. Okay, to stop that bug, doesn't stop the blank bug, but it stops that bug, would be to go formula name manager and edit this. So rather than referring to table one service, I'd go equals and I'd highlight past by one cell. So it's actually referring to the name range and then just edit that to be 17. Okay, one row less and click okay. 
and then click close. And now when you do that, if you copy sheets, you won't get the warning, okay? And it works in terms of, you know, as you add more stuff, this list will get bigger, you know, and the named range will pick those things up, even though you've just sort of, it seems like you've hard coded it in, the actual range gets bigger. Great, a lot of hassle, okay? Okay, so what do I do now? Right, so I'm gonna go this, equals two call. Why am I doing two call? Because when I highlight this, table one services, comma, I can ignore blanks. All right, and I press enter. And I could also wrap it in a sort, just to make it sort in alphabetical order for when people are searching for things. Okay, put a little bracket at the end. So this now, I'm just gonna delete these two and watch what happens. No blanks. Okay, there's no blanks because two col comma one gets rid of blanks. Perfect. So this is now G7, which I can refer to in my data validation by doing G7 hash. Okay, so let me just move this up here just to make it really nice and obvious. So data and data validation, and rather than this, it equals G7 hash and OK. So this now works. And if somebody tries to type something in, it won't let you because it only lets these items. And if I cut and paste this to another sheet over here, for example, OK, oh no, it's not working. That's the one downside of this. You need to be on the sheet, OK, that you're in because this is looking for G7 hash on this sheet. So be on the sheet you're working in. And then with this, you can go equals, go to your validation list, click on this and see it puts the name validation list, the sheet name. Don't forget the hash and then click okay. And that's the safest way to set up your data validation. All right, check out some of the other videos that I've recorded on Excel and data validation things. And I hope to see you in the next video. 